Mary, blessed are you. Holy Mother of God, worthy, worthy are you. Mother of perpetual health, God's precious gift of love, you are the icon, the icon of love, the icon of God. You are the icon, the icon of love, the icon of God's love. Guide us, show us the way. Draw us closer each day. Help us to be like you. Always faithful and true. Mother of perpetual Precious gift of love. You are the icon, the icon of love, the icon of God's love. You are the icon, the icon of love. The icon of God's love. You are the icon, the icon of love, the icon of God's love. You are the Hi, good morning everyone and welcome to Catholics at Home. Today is a special edition where it's our 30th uh, uh, show we're doing today. And it's, some, it's a topic we have close to my heart and also I think close to Father Clarence's heart, which is unity through sports. I mean, the reason why we chose this topic is because I think we're dedicating the month of August and September to speak about unity and basically how uh, unity is so important for us. And I think sports has been one of the key things which has brought many of us together as Malaysians. And, uh, and I think today is something we have two special guests yeah, who are legends in Malaysia sports. Yeah, we have Dato James Silveraj and Mr. Stephen, yeah, who will join us as the Malaysian hockey coach. Yeah, so uh, if again, for those who are tuning in, good morning <coughs> to all of you. And if you haven't liked our page, feel free to like our page. If you haven't shared our content, please do feel free to sh click the, the share button so that more people will be able to join us in this chat today. And without further ado, I'd like to invite um, my, my, my good friend and <laughs> who is a Manchester United uh, follower. Uh, yes, and even though we are, we are united through sports, uh, but not really a United fan, but <laughs> let me introduce to you Father Clarence. Hi, Father. Hi, morning. Morning, Mark. Wow. Morning, Father. A nice baju today, huh? 
all ready for yes, sports. Man. Yes, once yeah, in a while. I try to look for my for my football jersey, Malaysian one. Don't know where it is. Also, hilang kan deh. What are you? you saying that someone will sponsor it for you for that? <laughs> <laughs> like you said, sports unites us. Sports also can divide us because you are a Liverpool fan and I am Man United fan. Yes, isn't brother. it? <laughs> yes, definitely, brother. <laughs> but yeah, we still yeah, when you, yeah, we are united in a way, but uh, yeah. yeah. But, Division is not something which is so divided in. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. You used to be a. I mean, not used to at least. I know you. You played badminton quite, quite actively, isn't it? I mean, used to represent Slango, I believe. Yes, father. Uh, many, many years ago. <laughs> at different levels, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so long time. I mean, uh, yeah. I used to represent Slango many, many years ago. Uh, but of course, the two guests we have, they have represented Malaysia much bigger and they've done so much for the country. And I'm quite excited to actually speak to them, Father. I mean, to, to and funny thing is, Dato James Silveraj, basically, uh, he, he, he went to the same coach as, I mean, my coach is actually the same coach as him and, and the coach has been there for many generations. And today he's also the head coach for the Paralympics is Mr. Chiku. Yep. So, I mean, uh, we are very grateful for the people who have come into our lives to actually mentor us in not only in sports, but also in the foundations of building a, a good a human being. Yeah. Yeah. I think sports is very important, I think, to unite us. And I remember, I don't know, I'm sure many people have seen that movie called, uh, named uh, Invictus, I think, you know. Uh, it was about the, the Rugby World Cup. I don't know whether you watched it, Mark. You know, it's a very po powerful, um, you know, South Africa just coming out of appetite and they mm. had the World Cup. And I, and I think this was the, the brainchild of Mandela, to bring the whole nation together, you know. So you saw, you know, people who had animosity for years suddenly are, are also united because everybody is supporting uh, the national team. I think that's that's a very powerful tool. And I also, I think I've, I've said this before, you know, going to watch, you know, when like teams like Manchester United, Liverpool come to Malaysia, and I'm sure you have been also, uh, you know, everybody will wear the, that, 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 the jersey of the team but you know, if you look at it deep down in the heart, everybody's a Malaysian. They will yes. support. They will still at the end support the Malaysian team, and you know, even though you know they are they are wearing the different jersey. So I think that is yes. a very nice. I mean, I've been part of. Have you been? I'm sure you have been too. To some yes, of father. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've been for a couple of the the the, the sports. I mean, one of the most biggest memory for me was the '92 Thomas Cup, and also the hockey which they played in the Commonwealth Games. Father was. Uh, I think 98, if I'm not mistaken, in the Bukit Jalil Stadium, that was really crazy. I mean, yeah, maybe uh, Stephen later will tell us about that experience, but it was something which I think uh, really showed how united we were. And also, I think the whole grounds around the whole stadiums were just shaking and everyone was singing the same tune. I think that was closest I get to Enfield, uh, Father. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, Father, I, I, said, I, I mean, but also we... I will give you that laugh. Yeah, but well, Father, I mean, we also had Ola Bola, the movie, Father, not only really Invictus, yeah. Yeah? yeah, which we spoke about uh, Mokhtar Dari's uh, time in terms of uh, how they almost, the the, uh, the the yeah qualification and all which they, they brought the nation together, you know what I mean? So I think we, for many, many years, I think sports has been a unification method. So maybe for all our listeners who are listening in, maybe could you share with us what, what, what are your favorite sports and maybe what are the memories you have in terms of yeah, the sports which you played in school? Yeah, Gala Panjang is also a sport, uh, Father. Ah uh, yes, yes. We used to play that during recess to use the, you know, the the badminton or the sepak takraw court out outdoor and to play that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of different different games. Yeah, and I think that's that's the beauty of it that you know people came together. Uh, we didn't see who we were or you know where we came from. There was no you know uh, division socially, economically. Uh, there's no division you know whether even religiously. You know, I think we just all came together. Uh, and I'm sure uh, James and Stephen will have plenty of stories to to share about, you know, their own growing up. I can share my own growing up years. You know, everybody on the same field, you know, drinking from the same pail of water or the same tap. That's uh, you know, and everybody just played uh, whatever sport was being played for for that season. So, Father, what so, sports do you play in school, Father? In school, mostly mostly uh, football and badminton. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I will tell Stephen, you know, I, I tried hockey, try hockey. You know, the first day, you know, in school we used to have different color houses, red house, green house, and then we have inter-house games. 
So I was in house and then, you know, so tried out for hockey. So, and, uh, and when it came to, you know, so the practice session came for the short corner. The, the teacher put me to be in the goalpost. I saw the ball flying towards me and that was the last of my hockey uh, experience. <laughs> I said, never again, uh, never again would I go back to the hockey. That was the last, yeah. But we used to play, like, I mean, we used to play among friends. And, you know, I, I think it was, the height of it was, I think, 75. World Cup was in Malaysia. Hockey World Cup was in Malaysia. Yeah, you know, so everybody had a hockey stick at the time, uh, yeah. playing playing in the in the school padang. So, yeah, like, so we all played different games. Uh, I'm not a generation of of, of, of computer games, you know. You give me a you give me a joystick. You give me a you know what I don't know what you call these things. Father, uh, there's no more joystick, father. Okay, what, <laughs> what do you call this? Uh, Whatever uh, game pad. Or... You, uh, you know those things. I am hopeless at it. I'm hopeless at it. You give no. me a badminton racket, a hockey stick, or anything. I'm much better. Yeah. So, so different more, generation. Yeah. So to all our listeners, I mean, uh, I used to when I was an altar boy in Assumption, I used to play futsal with Father Clarence, and to my our surprise. He's actually pretty good. Like. He's like the, uh, how do I say, the Roy, not the Roy Keane. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he can control the game like, for us. Like. So, I mean, it was a pleasure yeah, and honor of, to play with him. Remember, there were two of us who played against you all. It was Father Albert and myself. Yes, yeah, Father Albert also. Father Albert was the bull. Like. He would yeah. chase the ball and, 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 and score goals and you are the play, and playmaker. And like. Both of us could take you all down. Well, those are those days. <laughs> anyway, give chance, Father. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's bring in our guest, Mark. Let's bring in... Uh, yeah. Our yes, father. So our first guest, Father, we have Stephen Van Huizen, who is a former national player. At the same time, also the national coach of Malaysia. It's our honour to have you here, Mr. Stephen. Thank Hi, you, Stephen. Mark. Thank you. For, uh, morning, Father Clarence. Morning, Mark, Stephen. just want to say one thing first. You never walk alone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> father, I'm, a, I'm from Blue House. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to play here. All right, yeah. like today, you're two against one. Yeah. Stephen, welcome to welcome to our show. I know you are a household name uh, for for hockey. You know, uh, and both as you were national captain, you were then coach. Uh, you know, a, a name, and then your family is very much involved in hockey. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Stephen. Where, where did you grow up? You know, a little bit of your how you got involved in hockey. Okay, uh, my family, as you rightly say, says uh, got a name in hockey. My dad and my uh, Lawrence and my uncle Peter. Both played for Malaysia in the Olympics, 56, Peter in 56 and Lawrence in 50, uh, 64 Olympics. So it was very much in our blood. Growing up, there were a lot of Eurasians who picked up the sports. I'm from St. Paul and uh, St. Paul's was a powerhouse in, uh, in Sarama because the old boys like my father, uh, my uncle, William Penelis, Michael, and all the ex-boys used to come and coach the players. And uh, we took up hockey from, uh, and hockey was in the blood. Or every evening we just follow our parents to, to the field and we just pick up the game. We came naturally. And uh, so I went on to represent the country in the 84 Olympics and the World Cup and went on to captain the side. And then after that, after I retired, uh, actually, I suppose when I got married in 89, after the SEA Games, uh, two days after that I got married, I told my, my wife thought that after I retired from playing, that's the end of hockey. But one year after that, I went back to the coaching and I not stopped until last year. So it has been a long journey, about 40 years involved with hockey. Basically, Saramban, the Eurasians in Saramban, the Samarias, the Fidelis, uh, the Lazarus, the Nunes, uh, there were a lot of Eurasians who played the game. How, how was it, Stephen, for you? I mean, I mean, as growing up, uh, I mean, you know, at a time when everybody, you know, played the sport, you know, it doesn't matter where you came from. I'm, I'm sure, I mean, you probably share an experience where, you know, a common feel, uh, and playing, you know, and everybody came, you know, different people of different races, different social backgrounds. What was it like? I mean, just, you know, and... Okay, during the school days, obviously, our team was definitely a mixed team. I mean, it's all races, Malays, Chinese, Indians, Eurasians, Sikhs. I mean, it was a diverse uh, group of people playing the game. During my time, uh, any sports, hockey, football, you have the selection was always mixed. And we were very united. I mean, whatever race or religion, we used to be training together, get into, I mean, I mean, it was a very close, uh, close knit uh, team, a uh, family. My friends were all, all races, Malays, Chinese, Indians, you name it. And uh, even in the national team, uh, when I got into the team, so for example, in 84 Olympics, there were five Chinese, uh, three Eurasians, three Sikhs, uh, three Malays, one Indian. And we did things together. I mean, there was no such thing. I mean, we did, everything we did, we did as a group. 
whether it was in our training camp. And even if you, if you are in the camp, you probably have another uh, roommate who's probably of a different race and you learn how to respect them. Uh, if they are praying, let's say I've got a Muslim uh, roommate and he's praying, then I respect him by switching out TV or keeping quiet and say my own prayer. And uh, as a team, because I come from a team environment, uh, we, we, we pray together as a team. Certain, certain times, we pray together as a team, even though we have a different religion. So, uh, uh, can I also ask, I mean, uh, you mentioned that uh, the team was uh, united and also, I mean, when you look at it, what was the, like, what are the key memories which you had, uh, which which showcase that that big unity and all? I mean, do you like have any rituals before the games and stuff like that, which you all did together? Okay, sometimes you get, uh, uh, depends on the coach and the manager, right? Different, we have got different coaches. Sometimes before the game, we get together into a circle and we, the coach will say a few words and the manager will say a few words. And then we get somebody to lead the prayer. When I was captain at the time, at the time maybe I was more senior, I used to say the prayer. I, and I tell the players that I'm saying myself in my own way, you say in your own way, your prayer in silence. But now in the modern time, there are more Malays, the more Muslim the team and less of the non-Muslims. So I get a Muslim guy to lead the prayer, but the non-Muslims, they say in their heart, like Kuma or my son Joel, they say in their heart. And we, we make the sign of cross and we say, whenever we win the game, especially a very important game, before we celebrate, or we are all in the midst of celebrating, I always try to get them together and then get together in a group, maybe in the center of the field, kneel down and to thank God for the victory. And we do it because we think that's what we give us a victory. Obviously, you can say the other team is still praying, but we as a group, would like to thank God that we have won and this victory we all we give it back to him. But one thing about sports, uh, Stephen, you know, uh, as you said, you were a national team, Olympics, uh, and also World Cup, you know. You see a, an event like that, you know, all Malaysians come together, you know. Uh, and uh, you know, so when you when you go for events like this and you come back, I'm sure you meet a lot of people, you know, uh, when you when you go out, you know. Uh, what are some of the things people come up and you know how do they share their their, their excitement you know uh, how do they share their expectations like for a national team yeah i mean uh, everybody knows the winner so everybody wants you to win so when you win you don't have to worry when you come back to the airport they arrange groups everybody is patting you in the back and all that because they they want to share share the victory with you obviously when you lose they are a bit disappointed but you know, despite that i mean at that point of time they're disappointed but when they see you later on they sort of encourage you. Uh, I mean, victory is, uh, I mean, it's something that, like, okay, like what Mark said earlier in the Commonwealth Games in 1998 when we played in Bukit Jalil, it was packed. Never before have we seen a stadium so packed for hockey. All right? For hockey. There are so many first looking for tickets and we couldn't get tickets to get everyone. Fortunately, we got, uh, my players were having their parents coming this gate and we were running there to give them tickets and everybody, so many friends uh, asking for tickets. And people of all races, Malays, Chinese, Indians, all trying to get into the stadium, trying to share this moment, this special moment in Malaysian hockey. The first time you're entering the finals of Commonwealth Games and winning the civil medal in Malaysia, you could see the joy in the face of the people. Everybody was together, united, wanting to share in this moment that these players gave back to them, playing for the country. And this, for me, is what sports is about. Sports bring people together, irrespective of your race, your religion. When you are in the stadium, you don't care who's standing beside you. When the goal is scored, you're probably hugging and high-flying everybody around you. And that feeling is something that you do not, you do not plan. It just happens spontaneously. Yeah. So what does it feel like uh, to actually wear the Malaysia flag as a player and then later on as a coach in, your, in yeah, the emblem? Actually, it's an honor. I mean, it's a, it's a privilege. It's not a right. You have to work for the privilege to play for Malaysia. There's a lot of hard work involved, a lot of sacrifices. And I always tell my, my players, don't think the team, the team, the team, the national team is more important than any individual. And this privilege to play for a national team, you cannot take it for granted. You have to earn the right to play for the national team and you have to give everything. And that feeling is something that you cannot buy. You cannot buy your way into a national team. You have to earn the right to play for a national team. And because you, when you earn it, you feel very proud because you're done it for yourself first, then for your family and loved ones. And then you also play for your country and try and bring honor to your country. Yeah, yeah I, that's, think I, I think that's a very, 
Yeah, very good point that you you point out that you know it's a lot of hard work uh, to be a sports person, a personality to to represent Malaysia. That's that's interesting. Mark, you you played you played for Slango, Mark. What was it like for you? You know, to hear all people cheering you, you know, seeing you know you look at the... we didn't have so many people at that time on the stadium. Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good, like, I mean, I mean, uh, at that time we wanted the state to win. You know what I mean? And uh, I think we would cheer whoever on and also we'll, we'll do everything to advise each other. I mean, uh, to motivate each other in the courts and all. But I think for badminton versus hockey, one is an individual sport and one is a team sport, which is totally different. And for team sports, I always wonder how, I mean, in the front there, for you to play United, at the back there, there are a lot of things needs to happen in the, in the back room and also in the coaching round. So what do you do to foster that, that team spirit and also that, 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 that connection between the team members, Stephen, if I may, if I may ask. Sure, Mark. I mean, you know <laughs> there is a team sport. There are different personalities involved. Each of us come from different culture and, of course, different religion. So, obviously, eating together, going out for meals, doing things together helps to build up this teamwork. There will be differences. There will always be differences, whether whatever, even it could be same race or same religion. There are differences. But the most important thing is when we go in and step onto the field, we are doing it for each other because we only can, if we are not united, we never win. So a lot of things on the, in the background, like you say, is like doing, doing simple things together as a group, as individuals, as group of two or threes. Like you say, sim- having a simple meal together, having an outing together, going for bowling together, going for a film show together, doing things together. But you see, yeah, the boys, when they go through, when they go through things, they are telling is very tough. All right. They probably be against the coach. I'm a coach. So when you are a player and you do things together, then you become more united because you know that you're going through tough times together and you need to draw on the inner strength when you face tough times on the field. In the competition, that's where you need to draw on each other's strength because you need to fight against the opponent. Mm. Yeah, speaking about, yeah, you know, you're talking about the difference between team sport and individual sport, you know. So for for individual sport also, we have uh, this morning with us uh, Dr. James Salvaraj. I think this is before your generation, La Mark. Ah, maybe you are you are a different generation. You know, I remember him you know, as a little boy uh, watching him. Maybe we can bring we can bring uh, Brother James into this conversation. You see a different perspective. Uh, good morning, James. Morning, brother. Morning, man. Well, yeah, I'm sure you know Stephen. You're all in the Scots fraternity, and you know. Uh, so, what we have this morning, we have two different personalities. You know, uh, uh, Stephen would be. Mark's growing up generation, you know, <laughs> and I, I remember, of course, I remember James was, I was a little boy, you know, I was, I was sharing this with James, you know, uh, remember watching uh, 1975, uh, that was my first introduction. My father was a big badminton fan, so he introduced us to watching on black and white TV, neighbor's house, watching that, that nine games uh, of semi-final and final. So James, uh, I mean, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know many uh, many of our listeners may or may not have heard about you. Maybe they came out of the generation of maybe Miss Boon and and beyond. Tell us a little bit about. I remember James, So Si Leong, Puawa. These are the names that I, I grew up. Uh, that one, that one, a generation before me, Mark. That one, that one is like Punch Gunaran. All is a generation before I was born. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, James. Uh, where do you come from, and you know how do you got involved in badminton? Uh, father, something about myself, I, I, I grew up at the Wembyton Hall. My father was working as a caretaker in the Stango Wembyton Hall, Jalan Kampung Atap. And that's where I started learning about the game. But the, uh, the surprising thing about me was, my father never let me play badminton in the hall. There were three courts there, but you know, I would never had a chance to play. I was playing outside the hall with a, a cardboard and a wooden stick. That's what, how I started off playing badminton. And then from then on, I only moved into the badminton hall when I was standard five. I studied at St. John's Institution. My whole education was in, in the mission school. And, and, and that made me a better person as, as, as a Catholic and, 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 and uh, playing, taking up the game. I think uh, from there, I started off playing. And I talking about the 1975, that was, I, I moved on to play and became national champion in 74, 75, 76. Three years, I was the national champion. 75 Thomas Cup was something which I which I always remember. That was something that was totally a different. It was the team sport and uh, 
that group of players that you mentioned just now, I mean, was Sao Su Leong, Kuawa, Dominic Sung, uh, Mufulian, X and John's boy also Mufulian, and Sufian Abu Bakar. So we were a mixed team, like, like Steven. We had five, four Chinese boys, five Chinese boys, me Indian, one Malay. And, and, and we were totally united at one. And we played in the 75 Thomas Cup. Uh, in, in the final round was in Bangkok. If I can remember very clearly, Denmark was the team was supposed to win the Thomas Cup that year. They had three world champions, Fleming Delft, Ilo Hansen, uh, Sven Pri. And we were playing in the semi-finals of, the, of that tournament. And it was four matches on the first day, two singles, two doubles. And the next day was the three singles and two doubles. I was playing, one player had to play both singles and doubles. So I played in the third singles and the doubles. So I played one doubles match in, on the first day. The second night, I started the game in the first day. And I still remember very clearly in my, my head, the president was the, the late Tan Sri K. Johari. And he came to me and said, before I went into the court, he told me, my life is in your hands. We had to win that match. And, and me playing with the world champion, Ilo Hansen, what do you expect? I was a small kid playing against the world champion. But I went there, with God's grace, I prayed and I said, please help me through. What the, the president just said, and I said, I want to really win this match for the country. Putting a flag here, the Malaysian flag here, was the biggest pride I ever had. So I went on, and then you won't believe it, I beat him 59-59. And that was the, the beginning of my, my, my thoughts. I said, I beat the world champion in straight sets. So that's how we think. But the, the point was that back home, Everybody was glued to the TV. It was black and white TV and the, and the radio was on. Everybody was listening to the game and watching the game. And that was one hell of a thing. When we got back home after we lost in the finals to Indonesia, everybody was at the airport waiting to, you know, cheers. But the point is, what I'm trying to say is, there were Indian, Malay, Chinese, Eurasian, like what uh, Stephen just said. Everybody was there waiting to greet us back. So it was one hell of a feeling that you come back as one nation has come back, one Malaysia, as a Malaysian team, you can understand, you can feel the, 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 the feeling of unity among us. Yeah, man. And last time, I mean, Dato James, I mean, uh, did you all have to fund your own uh, funding to, to, to travel for tournaments or, or, or things like that versus now? We, we didn't have to pay anything. The, we, we trained the, the government. I think the association got it all the sponsorship and everything. So... We were, we were trained. But as, as I said earlier, I spoke to you all both earlier. Can you imagine I got $3 allowance <laughs> during the training session? And now we get $100 a day. So it's a, a totally different thing. It, it, uh, badminton is a profession. It's like, you know, studying for a degree. You, you can take badminton as a profession. But the thing is, how much time you are going to give, uh, dedicate your time for this particular sport? Because it's individual sport, you have to excel. And if you don't excel, how many Li Chong Wei's can we get? We may only get one Li Chong Wei. So now we have another player coming in. Hopefully the boy will wake up and, and come up. Thing. But when we talk about unity, I'll go back a little down the memory lane. When I, when, when I, when I was a student in St. John's, I used to remember when there was PE lesson, when we used to go out there, a PE lesson, and when we come back, there was only one cup of left. There was only one cup available. So the taps were there. We had to take the water, the Chinese, the Indian, Eurasian, Malay, whatever you call them. We rang in the same way. We were all united together as one. We were all students, but we were all so close to each other. We didn't care about religion. We didn't care about race. We didn't care, care about colors or what. But we were there as one unity, as united as one, one student from St. John's. So these are good things that, that has grown in me, which I will send it on to my son to learn to, to become a, a good Malaysian. So what does it what does it feel like? Uh, you know, like you say, you were saying, uh, 1975 coming back. You know, to see everybody come and and support you and you know congratulate you. Of course, even though we lost the final, as you said, the the highlight was the semi final. You know, there was like you know, I'm sure you rain Malaysia doing I guess uh, uh, in the semi final against Denmark with the world champions. But coming back to see the whole nation united from the press. So how, how does that you know how, how does that feel for you and how do you feel that, that that feeling is something not i cannot explain you know you you see everybody come hugging you holding you you don't know whether it's a malay and you don't even know him when you're in the airport when you arrive 
you you meet all kinds of people I and mean, when you get all kinds of people coming and hugging you and tapping on your hand and said congrats you did very well you know that's a, a feeling that is just is not explainable it's, it's a different kind of feeling and and you feel so united you feel so good about this whole uh, experience is it is the new experience that you is not you, you can explain <laughs> as i said it's something something fantastic like if you look back again at the 1992 thomas cup where we won in in Sedim Nagara, you can see everybody was there. Fifteen thousand Malaysians were sitting there watching us play, and we went on to win. We had the Sidek brothers, Razib and Jelani. We had we had the the young players, uh, uh, Ong Beng Tiong, Fu Kok Kiong, Su Beng Kiang. You, you know all these players, Rashid Sidek. These play, these players brought back the Thomas Cup after twenty years. The last Thomas Cup in seventy five when I entered the finals. And then we went. When then we didn't enter until 1992. In 1992, we 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 hosted the Thomas Cup in in Serivanagara, and we won that cup. And you see all the Malaysians jumping for joy. The streets were all it, it became a standstill. Nobody, everybody was glued to the TV watching the game, or because they could not get to the to the hall itself. So you can see that the emotion from them, the feeling of unity, uniting us all together as one nation. That is the beauty of the of sports. Sports is the only factor that can bring everybody together. I think it sounds yeah. like Liverpool. Huh? Makes, <laughs> looks like uh, uh, oh, no, no, uh, yeah, no. we can win a Thomas Cup in uh, two more years. Lah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, 30 no, but, years. <laughs> but it's interesting. I think, I think what you say is very important, uh, James. I think you, know, you were saying that we may have different labels uh, that, that define us or describe us. You know, whether economically, socially, religiously. But in our heart, you know, we are all Malaysians, you know, and, and I think sports shows that very clearly uh, when you have to support someone, you know. Uh, I mean, more recently, I think like, you know, of course in badminton, uh, Lee Chong Wei has excelled uh, and everybody supports him, uh, you know, and whoever comes up, you know, uh, whether, even even if even if that, that player is, is the underdog, uh, and still, we know in heart we are Malaysians. I think that's the beauty of that's the beauty of of sports that can that can bring together. Uh, that's amazing. Just to just let our our viewers know, uh, if you want to to pose a question to either Dr. James Alvaraj or even to to Stephen Van Heusen, uh, do post your, your your questions, and we'll try they will try and answer some of your questions uh, with regard to unity, how they work together, how they excel together. Uh, you have the in the comment section. Uh, just put on questions and uh, direct it to either uh, Stephen or James, and we'll try and address some of these questions that you have uh, for them. Uh, this is something like a little bit like up close and personal with our great sports uh, personalities. Uh, it's interesting, Mark. You know, uh, I just found out that you know James is uh, a Johannian, uh, mm. and and Stephen is. From St. Paul's, you know. Yes. So it looks like mission schools have, have, have produced some national champions here, you know. Uh, perhaps you can we can bring Stephen into the conversation. Uh, so St. John's versus St. Paul's now. And we have Mark <laughs> Mark from La Salle, La Salle PJ. Uh, so it looks like the, the brothers did a good job like, pr producing some some great sport personalities. Uh, Definitely our, the parents. Definitely uh, the mission schools did a good job on us. Because it's an all all round education. It's just not about uh, studies and but all round. Uh, St. Paul's have produced about twelve Olympians, eleven oh. hockey Olympians. So I don't know about St. John's, but I know uh, S. Bala is from there. But uh, uh, Kyrie Zaina is from there. But uh, St. Paul's have got twelve Olympians, eleven hockey Olympians, and one athlete, athletics. So they have done a good job, and I think uh, we are very grateful to the brothers for for giving us the right direction. And I think they help us a lot in in the way that we we have, we, we approach life and approach uh, in sports or you know you know daily life. It's an interesting point you bring up, Stephen. I, I mean, talking about holistic education, you know, uh, today a lot of emphasis is on the intellectual formation, you know. So you know, degrees uh, not A's are not enough; must be A star, you know. We kind of a competition, you know. What, what would you say to a lot of parents out there, you know, uh, with regard to encouraging them to to play sports? You know, I mean, Mark and I grew in a generation where we still played outdoors, but today very much 
sports is uh, confined to indoors, isn't it? Uh, and into the comforts of one's home for various reasons, you know. How did you see that as part of your human formation, playing outdoors, interacting with other people? How has that helped you as a person? Maybe Stephen first? Okay, I mean, uh, when we were growing up, I mean, our recreation was going out to play. We don't have these playstations and all these internet gadgets and all this. So in the evening, first thing is we go out and play. And when you go out and play, you meet a lot of people of different races. Whether you play football, or you go and go and play neighborhoods, you go and play all these games, catch spiders, play marbles, you meet people. All right. But here now, in the, in the present day, for safety reasons, could be for safety reasons, parents do not have whatever reasons. They're playing with their PlayStation with the TV, one person playing by itself. There's no interaction at all. For us, when we were growing up, we used to mix around with people. Every evening, we're out on the field. We only come back when the, when the parents call back and say, it's time to say your, your evening prayer. And we all rush back. So, but really, really, I think that's one basic point. I mean, very clearly, we went out and we met people and we played our games with people around us. Nowadays, there are some, some children, not everyone, who because of the comfort of the home, safety reasons, they cannot go because of the danger. Parents will probably give them some, some, some tools to play in their homes. Like I said, the PlayStation, internet, in the comfort of the aircon and all that. So, I mean, it's different generation, I guess. But that helps us to mix with the other races. James, you want to? Yeah, I, I agree wholly with uh, Stephen what he said. If you really look at it, how many people are out there? Going out is a, a different thing altogether. You go out, you get fresh air, you, you run or you walk, whatever. You, and you meet different, different people and you see all kind of people. But some people are still in the comfort of the home. They are sitting at home and doing what they have to do. But going out is so much better. You go and run or walk or whatever you want to do. And outdoor exercise is so much better than indoor. But, and then that's where you, you interact with people. That's the most important. You meet different kind of people and, and, and life goes on in a different uh, way. Is it? I don't know about you all, but when I was growing up, I mean, uh, I, 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 mean uh, I was not that naughty, but then uh, uh, I, I went to with, with this coach called Chikula who trains the badminton team and all. So uh, in LaSalle, we had lots of ch kids who, because LaSalle also was one of the badminton schools uh, and a lot of people wanted to play for or the country or the state who went under this, this, this school. But I realized that we had lots of different kinds of characters in this, in, in, in all of us. Some were good. A lot of them were cheeky and very naughty. Some even were gangsters. But I realized when they came to the spot, somehow the coach or whoever is this managed to bring people to become decent people after that in life. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I mean like, yeah, gangsters, they, they learn respect. They learn uh, how to be disciplined. They learn uh, even after school, they, they, they started businesses to be successful and all. But sports actually help you build that foundation of uh, yeah, of, of certain uh, values, you know. And, and I think that was very important. I know last time we used to make a mistake. We used to get scolding. We used to get our ears, ears, ears pinched. I don't know whether you had that at that time. So all the students, you'll pinch the ears, you know. And then we, we'll pinch each other's ears and all. And, 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 and yeah, we do get bullied also, you know, by the seniors and all. Because maybe sometimes we are too arrogant, you know. So sometimes they put you in place. So I don't know whether it was it the same at, at your time, Dato James and also Stephen, <laughs> uh, where you see different kinds of characters coming together. But sports actually build that uh, that solid foundation of of a human being, Yeah, agree, agree. In in a case like Chiku, you're talking about, he is about eighty five now. I think we all we were there at the uh, mark together with eightieth yeah. birthday of Chiku. He is a, a different personality himself. He's such an elderly guy, but when he goes into the court and he tells you what to do, whether you're a gangster, whether you're a player, you're what, you 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 tend to respect that man, and and you listen to him, and and you and he can change your life. And that is one man who who I was also under. He trained me when I was uh, was 14, 15 years old, and I, I can still remember him. You know, he was cheeky, but you know, pinching his ears is part and parcel of what his training is 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 bringing you up into a better person. And he really drives you to a tele and, and, and educates you to become a better person. And in talking about education, mission schools have really helped us a lot. There are many, many sportsmen from the mission schools. As a ex and John's boys, I, I, I can see that there were so many other players, like uh, Bala was the, one of them from the hockey side. There were other, I mean, the Mufu Liam was a badminton player. So there are, there are a lot of national sportsmen who are actually from mission schools. This is one good thing the brothers have done for all of us. 
Yeah, just to add on, uh, Mark, obviously sports, I mean, they teach us a bit of discipline, time management. You know, you, you know when you go to sport, you got a strict coach like your coach. You're a minute, one minute late, you're in trouble. All right? So we, we had coaches, my father, I mean, Yogi's father and all that. We knew that we were late, we are in trouble. So we, you know, and then all these so-called gangsters or bad boys that you had, they found a way to channel their, their interest somewhere else and to excel in sports. For me, a lot of the best hockey players or best players were rascals. People with term as rascals. But we learned how to, we have to man, man manage them. Because they had the talent, but they didn't know how to, they didn't know. The good guys, some of the good guys, they all follow the rules. They're not probably, they probably yeah. reach a certain level. But some of the, the really, very really rascals are the guys, if you guide them correctly and you correct them, they will give their heart and soul for you. They are the ones who will die on the field for you. And these are the ones that people or society turn them are rascals because they are mischievous. They are young. And they are just young. Hockey boys, they are young and they are mischievous. And you really have to have a hold on them. But if you guide them, you talk to them, and you get them over on this side, they will give their life for you on the field. I think it's a, it's a good, I mean, not just a good training ground for sports. Uh, I, I've always found sports as a good training ground to for human interaction also. You know, how do you interact? I mean, I, I've played sports. I've, you know, even though I'm a priest now, I, I've fought with people on the field over, you know, different things, you know. So, but we learn how to manage uh, one another in, in, a, in a very... Today, we may fight. Tomorrow, we are back on the same team uh, playing. You know, we learn how to manage. But I think maybe that's something that perhaps, like you were saying, when you are, you are playing, you know, uh, computer games, uh, it's, it's not easy to, to learn how to interact with people. Uh, and, and that gives you a, that's a skill by itself, you know. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's an important thing that you you mentioned, uh, human interaction. It teaches it's it's a good school of human interaction. Sports, uh, whether it's you know when you're, when you're out playing with one another, and that helps that helps the building of 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 unity also. Very very clearly, Father. In a team sports, you play a game every day. We play small games every day. We divide into teams. We will fight, and next day you make the teams. You keep on fighting, but the next day you come back with different teammates and you start learning how to live. You can have your differences, you can have your arguments. You, nobody is perfect. You lose your temper, you fight. And the next day you make up and then you become stronger, better friends. And you become more united as a team. There is definitely a way that in, in the team environment, there is you learn how to manage and how to live in the environment, accepting people of different characters, different mindsets, different uh, religions, different culture, background. You learn how to, to also accept them for who they are because no one is perfect. And in a, any team, there will be a lot of people. Everyone got their own character. So for me, it, a team sport really, really teaches you many things, how to adapt, how to adjust yeah. accordingly. Not saying that you give in all the time, but sometimes you learn how to accept them for who they are and move on. I mean, like I, I was saying, I mean, both of you are also not just sports personality, but, you know, uh, Stephen, you are you have been working in the bank uh, for a long time. James, I know uh, for years he has been with uh, with Bata. You know how has sports prepared you also for a corporate life? Uh, in that sense, you know how has it given you direction, vision? Maybe James, you want to, you have been with Bata for how many years, James? Uh, with Bata for forty years. 40 years <laughs> That's huh? a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> When we are growing up, it's always first to Bata, then to school. You know, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that, that slogan and is gone already. Gone already but yeah. that was how we all started. We all went to school with Bata shoes. And, yeah. and, 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 and I joined Bata when I was in my 20, late 20s, uh, 30 years old. 1980, I joined them. And that's I worked the, my way out from yeah. yeah. That's, that's a big thrill for us, like going at the beginning of the year, going to buy new shoes. And then, <laughs> and then you want your timetable card from Bata. You know, you must yeah. get. And the pencils oh, and the rulers. Badminton yeah. master, Fadia. Badminton yeah. master, too. Yeah, that's yeah. Badminton master was the shoe. It was three ninety nine when I was studying in school. How today? How today, did, how today fifty dollars. How did sports prepare you for for a corporate world? Given you direction. That's very interesting. How I started off. I I did a marketing course and and I headed the marketing division of Bata and for for the last ten years of working in Bata. Uh, I, I took up brand management and that's how I started building the power shoes. That was a sport shoe that was with Bata and uh, how that, that 
taught me how to build a shoe line, and and that's all the learning process for me in, in working in this company. And they sent me to to my head office in Toronto. I went there a few times in during my career. And then I went on to a lot of uh, sports shoe uh, shows. I went to Atlanta. I went to Las Vegas for shoe fairs. So it that that helped me meet different different people from different different countries, different different races, different different people, and 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 and, and make me a better person. I I grew up working with Bata in the last forty years of my career, and uh, and I think I've learned a lot during my time in 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 that particular company, and uh, and it made me a better person actually, and uh, and it, it taught me what was marketing all about, how do you market your products, how you market your your goods, and get get people coming to your stores, your your satisfaction is when when you. Bring in a product and then get that product into the market and and people buy your shoes and you feel that oh you've done a good job, that is the the best satisfaction you can ever get in in in, in promoting your company's products, and that's how my career in Bata was there for the last forty years. Forty years. So I guess this it's your your discipline as a sportsman also helps you to excel uh, in corporate world. Hundred uh, percent agree, Father. That, that's the most important. It, it it helps you, and they and the, the good thing about us, both Stephen and I, will agree that when when you are a sportsman, people remember you. So when you are in, in in your corporate world, people always remember you. Oh, you're from Bata. You are you are oh Stephen from the bank. So that's how we all have lived on. Now. That has helped us, in fact, to build our career in the in the corporate world. And people so, understand you and, and, and know you better, is it? Stephen, you want to add something? How has sports helped you? Yeah, I guess world? I guess uh, like because we are so used to be a team environment. There's a lot of teamwork and a lot of discipline. I said mention about timing and all that. So when you go to 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 the corporate world and all that, I came from rank and fast. I when I left the uh, school from after form six, I joined the bank. I was given three. I was given option to join the police force to go to the bank or to join Tanaga. Of course, when my school teacher, Mr. Hillary, told my father, bank is more secure. So finally, I ended up in the bank. My father didn't want me to join the police force. He said, I'll get spoiled and start drinking or smoking. So I, I mean, it is as good a good career in the bank. Because of the discipline, that you do your work and you do it well and you want to do a good job. Along the way, they recognize, even though I've been away from the bank for many, many months, training, representing the country, they did recognize that whenever I'm back in the bank, I give my best, I learn fast. I I was really, uh, able to adapt and adjust, and so I got promotion all the way to about to be assistant manager before I re, before I retired. Obviously, you cannot have the best of both worlds. You cannot be thinking of, of promotion all the way and bonuses when you're not there. But I think it was opportunity for me to be able to do what I was passionate about in sports in hockey, but also to also have a security in the bank to provide for my family. So I'm grateful for that. I could manage to combine both. And that is because of what I what I learned from sports. I bring it back to my my workplace and for workplace, bring it back to sports because I'm very fortunate that my employers were very understanding, and of course the family is understanding because 40 years involved in hockey is a long time, and it's, I think it's a good time that I had a break this year. So we have we have a question from one of our viewers. Perhaps we can. There's a question from from Angela Vincent. I guess you know this. Both of you have managed teams. You know, what is your greatest challenge in in managing uh, Stephen, the national team? Uh, also, James has been involved in management of in sport. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, James, you want to start? No, I uh, let Stephen. There's so the question. I think <laughs> good for Stephen. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, because as I said, I mean, you're you're handling people, so you're handling personalities, different characters, and you try and be the best for them, to be fair to each one of them. They must see that you're trying to be fair. Managing people is to make them feel they're important. They feel that they, they have a role to play because not everybody has the same role in the team. Some people are playing a smaller role and they feel slighted sometimes. So you have to make everybody know, realize that they're important. Everyone is important to the team. The team is as strong as the weakest link in the team. So for me, is to make sure that everybody feels that they are they are important, they are wanted, and they have a role to play in the team. We all have differences, but we try and make sure that everybody wants to be part of the team. Everybody wants to enjoy being part of the team, and they, to do that, they must sacrifice some of the personal, 
personal uh, needs, they have to put the team ahead of everybody. So the hardest part is to manage them as individuals, to make them to, team as, to think as a team, because we are in a team sport. And as I, as I always emphasize, the team takes priority over the individual. The team goals are a priority over the individuals, but we want to make sure that every individual knows that they are important for the success of the team. I think managing them is very important. Yeah, let me end on a little bit there. Uh, if I go back, my, my, my past experience as a player, before I managed the team, my partner was Mu Lian. If you remember that he was excellent John's boy, this boy, and, and he had a funny character. The team manager had always to be taking care of him. When we were supposed to be resting, he would say, I want to go to the movie. So again, Chiku was the, was the key man in the, in the management of the team then. He was taking uh, Mu Fu Lian to, to the movie in the afternoon when we were resting. But that's, that, that's the way it is. If you, you want to manage a team, you have to look at the different profile of different person. You have to understand all the person. You cannot have just, just one person understanding you. And as a manager, you have to manage the total uh, members of the team because you have six players, there are six different characters. And you have to understand each of them. If you don't understand them, you definitely cannot manage a team. That's the most important thing about managing a team. You have to really understand them and do what you have to do, what, what you feel that they are good at. Because if they, if they feel good, then their result will automatically come. That's the most important thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, managing is so important. I mean, a lot of us, we depend on our coaches to, 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 to be examples and all for us to learn from, you know what I mean? And I'm sure both of you all also have been good managers to many people. Uh, but just maybe what I want to ask, maybe like for all those uh, parents listening here today and all, I mean, you, you spoke about uh, how sports has helped you develop in terms of personality, in terms of uh, building a career and all in the future from, from whatever disciplines. Maybe... You want to do a shout out to the parents listening to encourage their, them to not be afraid to send their kids to sports or any advice for parents today for the younger generation. Maybe we can start with you, Dato James first. I think uh, parents, to me, you should not be afraid to expose your children. You Exposing the children out there is so much more important. You can always have uh, your children, you can take sports as a profession. You want your children to become doctors and engineers and all that. I think parents, you have to, to let them go. I think sports will bring them being a better person and then exposing them to different people, different races, different religion and all. They become better people. And I think definitely the person learns better and then he will bring out the, the best in them. Like, uh, like Stephen had said that, you know, Playing, playing outdoor and, and, and sitting them in the room is going to, it's, it's a world of a difference. You have to be exposed to make a prison and, and parents should not be afraid to uh, release them out and let them go out. Let them play as well as when the time to study, you study. And when the time to go and pray, you go and pray. So you, you, you break up your time into different, different uh, uh, portions, you see. Then only you, you can make a better parent. How about you, uh, Stephen? Yeah, I think uh, what James has said is true. I mean, uh, one thing is, uh, if you are a good uh, sportsman, you learn a, a lot of things that you can carry forward to your studies, uh, time management, uh, discipline, uh, so many things that you can learn through sports. And uh, you want your child to have an all-round uh, sort of a holistic sort of education. Not only that they're all bookworms and they don't have anything else. Physically, also, they need to be also healthy. And sports is one way to get healthy. I mean, if they are healthy, they are very alert. It helps them also to concentrate in their classes. So uh, at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong. But uh, you, if the child has got some interest or have got a, a talent, then you should try and nurture the talent. We don't know how far you will go. But if you just say, no, don't give it a chance because, uh, of course, we all, we in the modern world, everybody's looking for paper chase. You need a certificate to get a good job. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, if they're not happy because they don't get, uh, do, they're not doing the thing that they want to do, along the way, they will drop off. Uh, we, we should encourage them to try. And they, 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 they themselves will know whether they can, can go, how far they can go. But it's nothing wrong for them to give it a go. So I think you try and combine sports and other activities, the other, other activities maybe, whether it's uh, learning a, a, a musical instrument. But you try and combine so that they, all, they have a, a better, a wider perspective of what is not just studying, studying, studying. I think that's 
Uh, but we understand the pressure now. Nowadays, parents know without a good certificate, you don't get a good job. So they are actually looking out for their children, but just encourage them to see what talent they have. If they got talent in sport, like what James said, they're a good badminton player, they can make a career out of it. I know, like, like I was just talking to you just now, for every Nicole David or for every Lee Chong Wei, many fall along the way. But who knows, maybe your child could be a next Lee Chong Wei or Nicole David, yeah. Or next Tato James Silvaraj. Or oh, James Silvaraj. Sorry, James. Sorry, James. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> We're talking about the younger generation now. So yeah, yeah. You know, we are, we are on the older generation. Yeah. We, are, we are gone. No? <laughs> yeah, I mean, your, your children, I mean, very quickly, I mean, Stephen, I think your son is playing hockey, right? So he seems to be running in the blood. Yeah, I mean, he, he was playing national team for the last few years. Right? And then suddenly he out of blues, or not out of blues, he suddenly realized now he needs to start working on his career. And he make a choice to withdraw our national team. Even this Raza Cup, they asked whether he wants to be considered. He says no. Uh, so I think I leave it to him. He has done what he wants to do. Maybe now he finds that now he has to move to the next phase of his life. And it's difficult with the COVID situation because jobs are hard to come by. He's trying. But as I said in the uh, discussing with you, God's will. God knows the time. It's a time for everything. The time for him to play. And now maybe it's a time for him to step back and look at another phase of his life. And that decision he has to make. I can only encourage him. I don't force him. And today he decides to step out and to pursue something else. And the career is more important. I think maybe it's time to move on. If he can combine both, fine. If not means, then that the new phase of his life would have started. Yeah. So we are. Uh, yeah. So we're coming, Mark. We're coming to the end of our show. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know. This is the thing. This this whole month we have been doing a series on on the topic of unity. You know how we are called to be united. Uh, both of you, you know, have made lots of sacrifices. Uh, I'm sure, you know, even uh, family sacrifices, uh, economic sacrifices. You know, I, I think your time sports wasn't as professional as, as it is now. Uh, you have made sacrifices, and and all those sacrifices have somehow, not just somehow, but it has united Malaysians. People like me and Mark, you know, uh, and to to support you all to. But we also begin to realize that, you know, sometimes there are elements in our country that somehow we seem to be divided, you know. Uh, you worked hard. I mean, maybe you, yours was to excel in sport, but the indirect outcome of your performance united a country, you know. And I think that is a very powerful uh, thing that sports bring. What, what are your hopes? What are your hopes for Malaysia? Uh, as we have just celebrated our Independence Day, Malaysia Day. Uh, what do you hope for Malaysia and for the future generations? How do you see sports playing an important role uh, of uniting us? Anyone can start first. Uh, shall we just say, maybe Stephen, you want to start first? Yeah, I guess uh, we see what's happening in our country. I mean, we always hope for peace, justice, that all those good things that we pray for, that uh, we can live together as one people, irrespective of the race, the religion, color of the skin. Because we are the older generation, of course, we want to see that in the future, the future in future, our children and grandchildren will be able to live in this country peacefully and be accepted as equals. I think basically is that, I mean, we are, we are all here to build a country together, to be united together as a, as, a, as a Malaysian, not of what, what race, but as Malaysian. And this is our home and we want to make our home here. But uh, we are, I, for me personally, for my children, my grandchildren, that they can live in peace and be accepted as a full Malaysian. We are not second class, but full Malaysian. James? Yes, uh, totally agree with you and what you just said. Uh, uh, there's so much in this country. If you look at it, all the Chinese, Indian, Malays, we come from different, different religions, but there are so many intermarriages that have taken place. My own son is married to a Chinese girl. So if you look at it, there's so many, and this is home. For us, this is Malaysia. Malaysia is our home. And we want our people to be united together as one. We don't want to be split up because of religion or race. Because we, we cannot go back to, if you tell I'm from, I'm an Indian, go back to India. I cannot go back. This is my home. This is where I, 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 I was born. And this is where I want to, to be lived and, 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 and die in this country. Because I am a Malaysian. So in bringing everybody together is the most important thing as one race and one religion. Uh, I mean, one, one, one people as, as Malaysians. 
So whether we come from whatever religion, we are all Malaysians. At the end of the day, we have to stay united for the future of the children in our country. So I think that's the important point. I think, uh, and we talked about it, you know, when you put the Malaysian flag, uh, I think yeah. Stephen, Stephen has got it, uh, Mark has got it, you know, uh, in, on your jersey, you know, that, yes, that's there. <laughs> I tried to look for one, I couldn't find one. So never mind. Later on, maybe I'll give I'll you one, but don't worry. Give you a Liverpool one. Uh, I think that's what unites us, you know. Yeah. In heart, we are Malaysians, you know, no matter what background we come from. You know, and I and I think you have had the privilege of wearing that flag uh, on your chest or even carrying it in the stadium. Uh, to represent uh, a whole nation, uh, I think that is a very powerful message. You know yeah. that that flag represents us. You know, not where our ancestors came from, but where we are now, and yeah. where our next generation. So uh, there's a lot of messages of 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 saying thank you to to Stephen and James for their sacrifice. Uh, I'm sure you've heard this many times already, but you know it's always nice to hear it again on a Saturday morning. Uh, for the sacrifices that you have made for the country, uh, for for sports, for for giving everything, uh, for making uh, uh, the Lasal brothers proud also. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So thank All you very best, much. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much for joining us this morning in our conversation, uh, Stephen Manhu uh, and also James. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we can have other sports personalities too, Mark, uh, in the future uh, yes. to get them to our conversation. Uh, say, Mark said. A topic that is close to his heart, uh, also to mine. Uh, grew up in sports, yeah, and sports has been a part of my life in, in many ways. So, thank you very much to our viewers also uh, for taking time to be here. Uh, any last words, Stephen, uh, to our viewers out there? No, I mean, it's to, to you for, and Mark for calling, inviting me to share about my experiences. To so viewers, uh, uh, I guess, uh, keep praying for a peaceful country. We have a beautiful country here. Let's, let's uh, make sure that uh, we remain peaceful and uh, we pray for success of Malaysians of all races. James. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for bringing me and Mark. Uh, in the end of the day, we are all Malaysians. We have to be Malaysian, whether we come from whatever race. Stay united and be good. That's it. <laughs> yep. Father, I, I think... I want to say thank you to both of you for taking yeah. me back to my childhood a little bit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> That all. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, because John James was in the in the in the Thomas Carr was a small boy. I remember these names all being mentioned. Yeah, but it it, it, it warms the heart, you know. Like Mark talked Memory, about memories today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good Mark memories. Yeah, in the stadium, I remember watching this with some friends. You know, black and white TV, radio commentary. Uh, all these are nice stories to be to be told. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you to our audience too. Uh, this morning, uh, don't forget to like us on, on Facebook. Uh, you can find us also on YouTube, Mark, and also Spotify. You can find yes. us on Spotify. Uh, thank you very much for being here. I hand you over back to Mark. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, even though the show has is going to end, but you can still share it. I mean, it's made available on, on the channels Father mentioned on YouTube. So share it with your friends. I think uh, the wonderful sharing from Stephen and also uh, Dato James, I mean, it's inspiring to many of us and also can inspire you parents for your children in terms of bringing them to sports. And I think as usual, Father, before we end, maybe could we say a unity prayer for sports? Let's pray, Let's pray together. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings, for your graces. Uh, we want to thank you for the many sportsmen, women who have represented our country, who have united us in many different ways. We pray, Lord, for our nation. We pray for unity. We pray that you will continue to lead us, guide us, that the path of peace, harmony, justice may always be followed and upheld. We pray that in the little things that we do, whether in sports or in other areas of life, we may always seek to be bridge builders, to build our nation, to build our people, to be Malaysia in our hearts, to be disciples of Jesus in the way we profess our faith. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
I mean, uh, yeah. So for all those listeners, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, yes, we'll be back again next week. Uh, we have Jamming for Jesus every Friday for all those who want to join in your homes for praise and worship, uh, where we have various groups from all around. Uh, yesterday, we actually had a, a group from Indonesia, Bandung, join us. Yep. So, I mean, if you haven't uh, listened to last yesterday's session, do catch us on YouTube. At the same time, next Saturday, we have another show, live show, uh, su- a surprise for you all. <laughs> it's going to be something awesome. Uh, and and yeah, talking about sports before we end, we also spoke to Panda Lela, who who also uh, is uh, came on our show, and she will be going for the Olympics. Yeah, so I think uh, yeah, we 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 look forward to having more guests coming in, uh, and and especially as the Olympics is coming on, uh, we pray for all the sportsmen who is preparing for the Olympians that they will carry the Malaysia flag flag with pride, and also we pray that they'll bring the nation uh, closer to, together and also united as one front. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much. Have a good weekend. And we see you again next week. Yep. So this is Catholics at Home. Have a good weekend.